Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to model your site. Now, sites are generally quite complex forms. There's slopes and divots and whatnot. So we're gonna be talking about how to use the mesh tool, how to draw your contours and how to set the right elevations. So you can see here, I've already drawn the extents of my site. I've used the mesh tool to do so. Now, if you don't know how to do that, it's very similar to drawing a slab. If you want a video that goes into more depth, just chuck it down in the comments below. You can see here that I've done the extents of the site based off this image that I've imported and scaled. If you need more information on how to do that, check out my previous video that I'll have down in the link. And you can see here that the image also has a bunch of contour lines. Now, in order to transfer that information over into our model, we can use any of these line tools. I would recommend using the polyline and preferably I like to use the spline. Um, I feel like the spline over the polyline will give you a more organic line work, which is in my opinion, better suited for a site. Now I'm gonna be a bit scrappy with it. If you want your spline tool to be a bit more accurate, you just simply draw more nodes and that will give you more control where that spline ends up. I'll also turn off the image and show you here that an important step, no matter what line tool you're using, is to just extend it past the extents of your mesh. I will show you why that's important later. Otherwise, I'm going to turn the image back on, activate my spline tool again, and I'm just going to speed up the video as I finish the rest of these contours. All right, now that we've done that, last piece of key information really that we just need to note on the image is the numbers, so the elevation heights. So we can see it starts here at the bottom at seven meters, works its way up to 16. Each thick line is a meter interval. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna start from the bottom and work my way up. But before we jump into that, I'm just gonna turn off the image again. You see we've got the mesh and we're left with our lines. now. In order to combine these, we need to select the mesh tool and select our mesh and then press hold space bar. Now, as we hold space bar, you see our cursor changes to this magic wand tool. Now, magic wand tool is used for a variety of different things. In this case, it's going to transfer um, the line work and drop nodes onto our mesh. Now, if you're finding that your magic wand tool isn't coming up, it's probably because you've selected your mesh without selecting the mesh tool. Now, if I just have it like this and press space bar, nothing happens. So make sure your mesh tool is selected. It should come up. And all we do is hover over one of the splines and have fit to user ridges, click OK. And you can see here it drops nodes along our mesh. So now we have more node points to alter our elevation points. Now I'm just gonna speed out the video again as I do that for the rest of the contours. There you go guys. But now you can see that we got nodes now along all those lines. So these splines are no longer useful. So we can just click the spline tool, Control A to select all or Command A on a Mac and delete those. You can see here, even in 3D, we have a flat mesh that has all our contour lines. Now in order to get the elevation points, don't freak out. We don't need to go one by one and alter those elevation nodes. All we need to do is use our image for reference. It started at seven, works its way up to 16. And we just need to select those contours individually. If we select the space, or the perimeter, it'll select all the nodes. We don't want that, so select the line specifically, choose any of the nodes, choose your elevate mesh point, and then change that elevation to what you need. Now, this is in millimeters, I want it seven meters, so that's 7,000 millimeters. All you need to make sure is that apply to all is selected. If you don't have that, it'll only alter the height of the single node that you've selected. But when we have apply all, it'll change all these nodes along this line. Now that's done. I'm gonna speed up the video again. And all I need to do is work my way up now. All 
All right, now that's done. They're all set. Now, before we check it out in 3D, the last points that we haven't done are the perimeter points. Now, these are all a little bit different. So all I do is select them individually and use whatever is most logical. Or if you have a plan that's more accurate, base it off that. This was 12, so I'm just gonna set that at 12,000. This one was about 14, make that 44. Now, it is only the perimeter nodes which aren't connected to the spline. So if you remember, that's why the spline needs to extend past because it does drop a node on that perimeter, but that picked it up earlier when we did the apply to all. Now let's check it out in 3D. And you can see here, we're close to the finished product. Some of the nodes on the perimeter, I obviously didn't pick up. So all you need to do if that's the case is make sure that your mesh, elevate mesh point tool is selected and I just manually fix that up. And there you go. That's your final mesh, guys. I hope this video has helped. Quick thing that you can note is that you can just have a shell. You just alter that here in your structure settings. And there you go. I hope this has helped you guys get on with your project so you can spend more time crying, or less time crying and more time creating. I wish you all the best. Stay tuned for the next video that I'll be uploading. It will be on about how to export DWGs. There's multiple ways you can do it in Archicad. Um, different ways are more or less efficient than the other. So stay tuned for that one. Otherwise, see you in a future video and thank you for watching. See you next time.